This is the Satisfactory Modeler, my go-to factory planning tool that has quickly taken the place of other external calculators and for a number of good reasons. I'm Jeezy, and I'm here to tell you exactly how to use this program and why you might want to consider using it over the alternatives. The existing calculators are perfectly viable as long as you know what you're doing, and they can save you a lot of time if all you want is a flowchart so that you can help visualize a factory on paper. However, they spit out a lot of information at you all at once, which I personally find very overwhelming. But everything in Modeler is given to you piecemeal. You can choose a desired output and you'll be prompted to work back from there until you hit raw resources. At every stage, you'll be given information about what alternative recipes are available to meet your production goals. And for me, there's something about working my way back through a production line that gives me a better understanding of how it works and how it will eventually be built in game as that is the ultimate goal after all. It's also a really good archive. You can keep all your factory plans in one place and refer back to them later in case you need to remember how they work. And if you're really good about keeping all of your factories in Modeler, there are some extremely helpful analytics tools which can give you information about your save that you would otherwise be unable to find. All of that and more coming up later, but let's start at the beginning. How do you actually get this program? Well, it's free on Steam as well as itch.io and I'll have both of those links in the description. Once you load up Modeler, this is what you'll see, minus all of the poorly optimized factories. Those are mine. Let's go over here. You can double click to open this menu. You could start planning your factory right here, but I would recommend setting up an outpost first. This is like going down a file directory and makes it much easier to keep track of your factories, as well as provide some extra functionality, which will become clear later. To double click your outpost again allows you to give it a title and you can open and you'll end up in basically the same place where you can now actually begin planning your factory. Double clicking again will bring up the same UI. You can go further down the outpost rabbit hole if you need to, but let's focus on production. There are a couple of ways to go about planning a factory in this program, but I'm going to start with choosing a production goal and then working my way back to raw resources. In this case, I want to produce 10 modular frames per minute. So right off the bat, you can see a bunch more information about what alternative recipes are available to you. You can see the default modular frame recipe, one which takes screws instead of rods, and one which takes steel pipes instead of rods. For the purpose of this example, let's just use the default one. And that will give us this little node right here. So we can double click on the modular frames on the right hand side, and set a part limit. Say we want 10. Alright, beautiful. Now it will show us the inputs that are required on the left hand side, and the number of machines we need down at the bottom. You can also change the number in this field here if you would like to limit the number of machines. Let's say you only have room for four assemblers instead of five. So that will also alter the inputs and outputs, as with a base clock speed on four assemblers, you're only going to be making eight modular frames a minute. It is pretty easy to do overclocking in this program, but I'm going to cover that in a little bit. So for now, let's just change the limit back to five. Now these are your inputs, 60 iron rods and 15 reinforced iron plates. Clicking and dragging back from these will bring up that same UI again, although it auto-populates with whatever the input is, in this case iron rods, let's pick the default iron rod recipe. It will automatically tell you how many constructors you need at base clock speed to produce that many rods. So let's just keep dragging that back until we hit an extractor. Now that's not a very advanced production line, let's do something more complex with the reinforced plates. You can see next to each one of these alt recipes what type of resources are required, but hovering over a card for a few seconds will show you more detailed recipe inputs and outputs. And we can see that the base reinforced iron plate recipe is not going to meet our needs, or at the very least we would need three of them at base clock speed. However, a single assembler running the bolted iron plate recipe will produce the 15 reinforced plates that we need. Now we need 90 plates and 250 screws. I despise the base screw recipe, so I'm going with cast screws instead, and I'm just doing default iron plates. Now that we have a couple more inputs which require iron ingots, we can drag that down to the existing smeltery bank, and the number of smelters as well as the required amount of ore from the ground will automatically be adjusted. These adjustments happen unless you have an arbitrary limit set on the amount of raw resources you're extracting, or on one of your machine banks. So if you're having trouble getting your modeler to automatically adjust these values, Make sure that all of the limiting fields are blank unless they have a reason not to be. In case these lines overlapping is a little confusing, 
You can also drag them around so that it's a little bit more clear what's going where. So there you go. It took a little bit more work to get here, but I feel personally that I have a much greater understanding of how this factory is actually going to exist in my game. And I got to personalize it to be exactly the way that I wanted. I know this looks a little bit different, but it is the same modeler page. I just dragged everything around so that it was a little bit more organized. And we're almost done here, but we do have some weird numbers, like four and a half constructors making iron plates. That's not going to work. I don't think Fixit has really mastered the half constructor yet. So we're going to have to clock that so that we have a nice whole number. So by double clicking on one of these cards, you'll be given some extra options like clock speed, whether or not you want to sloop the machine, give it a title, swap between machine limit and parts per minute limit down in this field below, or copy and paste settings between machines. But for now, we really only care about the clock speed field. In the case of these constructors, since we want four producing 90, and it's given us four and a half as a default, all we have to do is account for that half a constructor's worth of work. By taking 0.5, which is the amount of constructor work that's unaccounted for, and dividing it by our target amount, which is 4, we get 0.125. Multiplying that value times 100 will give us 12.5, which is how much we need to overclock by. So 112.5 is our final overclock value. Moving on to the smelteries, you can do the same thing if you like, but there are a couple more ways to figure it out, and I just wanted to share all of them with you so that you can use whichever one is the easiest for you. There's an equation that I'm going to put up on screen right now that you can also use. Just pause if you'd like to jot it down. There's a third method for people like me who are confused by numbers, which requires that you have the game open, which I do most of the time, so this is usually the one that I use. So coming on over into the game, we can enter this into our quick search calculator where 257 and a half is the number of iron ingots we'd like to produce, divided by 8, where 8 is the number of smelters we would like to produce it within cleanly. That gives us 32.1875. Coming on over here and entering the target production rate will provide us with a clock speed value. So we can take that, copy it, and come back over to Modeler and enter that clock speed in here, which will give us a nice clean 8 smelters. This is only the beginning of what this program is capable of, because Modeler isn't just for planning factories, it's also a really great place to keep your planned factories. You can come down here to the bottom left and click this little book, and it will give you a whole array of new information about your current outpost and more. You have things like power output with net power usage. This is great for if you're setting up a power plant and you want to know exactly how much power your machines are using, so that you can figure out what your power plant is generating. You can see awesome sync contributions. You can toggle this button so that you can see how many awesome points you would get if you were to sync everything you're not currently syncing. Coming down to the overclock panel, it will show you how many power shards are required for the construction of this factory. This is also a great place to keep track of your sloops so that they don't get lost in some random machine somewhere. Clicking on this plus here will give you another panel and clicking on a drop down will give you access to a couple of more things. For example, you can see how many machines are required for this factory, so you make sure you have all of them unlocked. You can do the same thing with cost to build to make sure you have all of the resources available before you begin construction. And as I said before, it can be a good idea to plan out as many of your factories and modeler as you can. Reason for that is come up here to where it says current outpost and change it to everything. This will give you the stats of every single thing that you've ever planned out in modeler. Assuming that you're keeping a good record, you can actually use this to track material, power, and sync points throughout your entire world. I only have a few of my major factories planned in Modeler, and I would have more, but I only learned about this program a decent way into my current playthrough. Which is why I want everybody to know about this program as soon as possible. The earlier you begin plotting everything out in here, the more effective it can be. One final thing, which I actually learned as I was making this video, which I would love to share, is that if you have an output in an outpost, you can drag it up to this little plus here, and then go back up the file directory, and now this outpost is treated just like one of those little nodes from before. You can drag this over into another outpost. So now this new outpost has an input of 10 modular frames. So you can keep track of individual factories as outposts, but have your outputs move between them. 
let's say those 10 modular frames were actually part of a much more complex, versatile framework factory. And now you have your 10 required for your 20 versatile framework, and all you need to do is acquire some steel beams. The same also works in reverse. Let's say that you have steel beams coming from somewhere else. You can drag this out up here to add it as an input for your outpost. And now you can drag this down here and design an entirely different steel factory in this outpost. This program is so incredibly versatile, and I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that I still don't know about it, but I wanted to introduce you all to the basics because I find that it makes my factory planning so much simpler. Maybe the next time you have a new factory to plan, just go grab it. It's literally free. If you had a good time or you learned something, please like and subscribe to the channel. Additionally, consider becoming a member if you'd like to show your support for my continued content creation. And finally, there's a link down below to my Twitch where I stream my satisfactory progress. Here's a couple of screenshots from my recently completed power tower over on the west coast, the construction of which was done almost entirely on stream. So if you'd like to see me fumbling through my process, I'd love to see you there. But regardless of how you choose to spend the rest of your day, I hope that it's an efficient one. And as always, I'm Jeezy, and I'll see you in the next one. But let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Do you use Modeler already? Has it helped you out? Did I miss your favorite feature and you're really upset about it? Leave that and more down in the comments and uh, we'll both be upset at past Jeezy together. God, I hate that guy. Yeah, I hate that guy too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah that guy We should sucks. take money away yeah, from that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Anger, rabble, rabble. Anger, rabble, rabble. Anger, anger, scream, scream, mad, upset. Yeah.